Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Thoughts. Today, I'm from a beach location on the coast of Oregon, and uh, we are in the middle of a family summer vacation. And um, I thought I'll just um, live stream in and see how are you all doing? So anyway, today's Thursday Thoughts is going to be on fermentation. And I want to point out um, uh, on why this is such an important topic, okay? And that's because I feel that the industrial, the wholesale baking industry has pretty much forgotten about flour. Yes, flour, it's the thing that you buy in bulk, and um, a lot of people who buy flour don't understand flour, okay? They just buy based on what they were given. In your case, if you're a buyer, it's moisture ash protein, right? Can't be any different, difficult than that to understand. I mean, given uh, moisture at 14%, ash at 0.5, you know, 5.5, 5, and protein at 12% to make good artisan bread. Um, from a heart rate spring wheat, right? So you're like, okay, no brainer whatsoever. And when crop changeovers happen every year, you plant your operators complaint, well, there's something wrong with this flower, right? And um, you're like, you scratch your head, like, I bought the right thing. Why are we seeing such drastic differences in the flower, right? Um, just know that traditionally, bakers in your position have had flowers that have oxidized over shelf life, over their shelf life, before they reach the plant, okay? And if they are not properly um, aged or oxidized, they use things like potassium bromate, ADA, datum to help them with their quality um, performance of the flour. So this allowed bakers to really, you know, um, buy cheaper flour so that they can deal with the plant, right? So that potassium bromate can deal with a lot of the protein quality issues. So why can't you use it now? Well, clean label. And if you're making artisan breads, it will be hard for your consumer to see potassium bromate in there. So you don't want that. Okay. So what can you do? All right. If you aren't able to get aged flour, which is mostly um, aged for a few weeks to a few months um, in silos, in truck and trail cars. Sorry, I'm at the beach and it's flying all over my face. Okay. Um, if you're not able to eat your flour, then the next tool that I would like to put in your toolkit is fermentation. Okay, fermentation provides the ability for your flour to hydrate, oxidize, um, for the protein to properly oxidize and exchange the di, uh, enhance the disulfate bonds, and in that process strengthens the dough and makes it pliable for machinery, right? More flowable, better pan flow, okay? So that's what my um, seminar is going to be about next week, the effect of fermentation, okay? So sign up today on wikipedia.com forward slash academy and find out in the webinar how you could Take a better look at your process and see if you could give it a little more fermentation. This is especially important if you're taking out um, dirty label conditioners. Okay, I don't like to call them dirty label, but they are FDA approved. Somehow the industry is moving away from it. Okay. So um, I would want to go into pre-ferments next week. I want to introduce the idea of pre-ferments for industrial bakers. 
Um, I believe this particular language has been erased from your baking history because someone decided to go straight to straight dough and use potassium bromate, right? So I want to introduce this as an alternative rather than you putting in more emulsifiers and more enzymes and you're not going to get good bread from that. Okay, let's go back into the science of things. And I want to introduce you, this is science of preferments like bigger, poolish sponge, sourdough starters, flour brew. If you can't do sponge and do at least try flour brew and a higher percentage of flour brew, like 30, 40%. Yes, it requires a change around in equipment, but that's the best way you can do it, okay? Um, and what about a bulk or sponge fermentation, okay? What if you give it just a one-hour sponge? Maybe it will work. I don't know, okay? Um, let's talk about the benefits. I mean... Fermentation. What is fermentation to you? A lot of bakers, industrial bakers, think fermentation is just a production of gas to increase the volume in your dough. So you get a fluffier bread, right? No, fermentation is about hydration. It's about relaxation. It's about machinability. Okay, the more hydration and relaxation and bulk fermentation that you give, the dough you're going to get a better machinable dough okay and it's also about the production of acids enzymes and alcohol that gives the the, the flavor it's like the dough thanking you it's like thank you for letting me sit and relax in return i will give you these awesome flavors see so you need to think about it that way okay um Pros and cons, trust me, I have thought about this for the longest time. I'm like, why aren't industrial bakers thinking about bulk fermentation? Okay, and I came up with these pros and cons, all right? The pros is you get higher hydration, means you can put at least 1% to 2% more water in that dough. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the addition of water to 1% to 2% for your bottom line? If you're buying hundreds and thousands of metric tons of flour every year, what is 1% or 2%? That is a lot. Okay, so think about that. That is a pro for you. All right? Last yeast. Yes, significantly yes. Last yeast, if you give it but a bulk fermentation of somewhere between four to eight hours. All right. Shorter mixing times. Yes. Imagine if you're doing a straight dough right now with 15 minutes of mix time, you can literally cut that into half with a bulk fermentation. Okay. And um, what does that do? That increases your throughput, that um, reduces the wear and tear on your mixer okay and that means a lot and yes you can actually go up and maximize the volume of your mixer right so no more mixing at 70 to 80 percent of the mixer capacity you can actually go 100 percent because that dough is so easy to mix up okay it's less stress on your drivers at the mixer okay so um, it also requires um, less improvers. Long fermented doughs, less improvers, okay? Short fermented doughs, more improvers. So you can understand the give and take on that one, okay? And lastly, better texture and better aroma. Who doesn't want that? Okay? The obvious downside of bulk fermentation is obviously heavy capital upfront, okay? It's just like one of those things that you make in your business decision. Either you pay upfront 
or you pay in the long run, right? I mean, that's just the cost of doing business. You got to decide for yourself, okay? And boy, is it costly when the line breaks, right? Because you got these huge tanks of brew or huge tanks of uh, sponges just sitting there. And if you don't get your line fixed within an hour, you have to throw these away. Yes, an hour. Okay. Um, and also, when you do throw away sponges, make sure you put them through the baking process. Okay. Do the kill step before you dump that into the trash or the or the pig um, the feed for the pigs. Okay. Why? Because you don't want an angry trash person at you. Like you don't want their truck to be exploding because you have you dump dough into their trucks. Okay. Put it through the kill step before you dump any kind of uh, sponges. Okay, so if you do that, then it's going to cost you a lot of money, right? So when you run a process or you run a line based on um, a long ferment, your PMs are so important. Like your preventative maintenance can't be more important in a sponge line. Okay, because you don't want to be down for too long. All right. And more sanitation is required because you have a lot of pipes, you have a lot of churros, you have your sanitation crew has just got to increase, you know. Um, and lastly, if you are one of those bakeries that have last minute insertion, order insertions, it's quite unlikely that you can do it right here. Okay. So those are the points that I'll be talking about next week in our seminar. I hope you have the time to join us and to ask the question um, on, you know, your different processes. And um, I would like to thank Heartland Mills, the awesome, awesome team at Heartland Mills for sponsoring this seminar. Because of your seminar, seminar sponsorship, it's free to you, okay? So join us next week, ask the questions. Mark's going to show you a couple of artisan formulas and, and talk about the um, ingredient functionality of these formulas. And um, it's time you take a break from work and join us, okay? Thank you, everyone, for listening to my Thursday thoughts. I hope... It puts more thoughts in your mind on how you can drastically change your business for the better. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.